moving in to our online lecture about texture. Um, so to review, the first kind of texture is monophonic, which is when you have just one line of music. So this is me singing about texture. This is the only line of music that you hear. That's how you know it's monophonic. Um, whether it's lovely or not does not matter. What matters is that it is just one line of music, monophonic. Now we can obviously add other lines. So say I'm, I'm sitting here, standing here with my ukulele in my hand and it's out of tune, I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to strum my ukulele. And I'm striking four strings all at the same time, ring, ring, and several pitches that move together. But there's no, if I change chords so that I have moving lines, I change chords all at the same time, and all of the strings that I pluck um, change pitch at the same time, which means that that is what rhythm? What's the same? The rhythm is the same, so we call that homophonic. And there's no one particular line of music. I mean, I could imagine that I the string go la, 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 la. And that's what that particular one string plays, but that line of that that string plays and the changes that that string goes through is not more important or more outstanding or the word that they use in the reading is salient it's not a salient melody that seems like it's more important than the other other what the other strings end up playing if i were the bottom string i'd play uh, That's what the top line plays. That's what the top string is. The highest pitch string is. That's the melody, quote unquote, that it's playing. But it's all the same rhythm, and none of the pitches are more important. So, melody, this, this is me singing about texture. My melody it doesn't match, but I have a melody and an accompaniment. And then it We have my melody, which is clear because it's got words and it's a voice and it stands on its own. That's what it means to be more salient. My salient melody over top of an accompaniment. So the overall texture is melody and accompaniment, but then you have to ask, what's the texture of the accompaniment? Well, goodness gracious, I'm playing an um, uh, a ukulele and I'm strumming homophonically, which means in the same rhythm, and so it's a melody and accompaniment texture overall. This is me singing about texture in a melody and accompaniment texture. And I'm illustrating the fact that my accompaniment is homophonic. Yeah? So that's a homophonic accompaniment. Um, if I were to go sit down at a keyboard, which I will actually go do now, carrying my computer over to the piano. I can play a line with my left hand that goes and this is a melody that is like Furushaka. I own integrity and maybe it happens over and over again but it's still a melody and over top I extra whatever I did um, and it's clear a completely separate independent line so I have one line that has its own structural integrity another line with its own structural integrity etc I put them together sing a melody over and so that is polyphony right that's two rhythmically independent lines that are of equal saliency right this moves slowly but it has a lot of integrity this moves more quickly and it has
has sort of more interesting um, movement tiger leaps, and it also takes place at a higher pitch, and those things also make it feel more salient, more. Uh, and so each one of those monophony, when I put them together, creates two independent lines, though they're very different from each other and independent of each other. That is polyphonic. <laughs> decide to add a melody, that might be an accompaniment that goes on top of a melody, or sorry, an accompaniment that goes underneath a melody. Say, this is my melody that I am singing about texture. This is a melody and accompaniment texture illustrating polyphonic accompaniment. That was a terrible melody, but I just made it up just now, so you understand. Polyphonic accompaniment and a melody and accompaniment overall texture. Now, so far this is just me singing stuff, and I know that probably what's gonna make things easier for you is if you can actually see and hear at the same time um, a lot of your visual learners, and I know that seeing the texture is gonna be the more helpful thing than just me breaking down orally. So now we're gonna plug into some speakers so you can get a nice loud sound here in the um, lecture capture application. So here is um, uh, Bogorodice Djevo by Sergei Rapaninov. He's a choral composer. So you're going to see the actual script. And so far, you can see the pitches are stacked on top of each other, right? This is called a quarter note where it's filled in and it has a stem. And we have a stack of those vertically and another stack of them vertically and another stack with this one stray note but for the most part we just have stacks of notes that are all the same duration here's a chord note with a dot tied to an eighth note which is a fill and a little flag on the side see the flag we have and then we have a half note which is a hollow you don't need to know these things but notice that they're all the same duration, which is why the choir all sings um, at the same time, they sing the same syllables at the same time. So there is, in this case, a, a slightly more salient melody, which is the line. So this is overall, you might classify this as melody and accompaniment with a homophonic texture, but the homophonic accompaniment is actually also in the same rhythm as the melody itself. So the whole thing overall is also homophonic. So the whole thing is homophonic because all boom, 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 yeah? But you could also, there's a little this fuzzy gray area that we were talking about uh, in the reading, where there is a melody, and the other homophonic lines are accompanying it. So you can say the homophonic, or you can say this is melody accompaniment with a homophonic accompaniment. And in fact, the homophonic accompaniment is homophonic with the melody. That changes just a little bit when we go on. at the same time. For the most part, everyone still has the same rhythm here. Starting on the next page, that's going to change. So you can see that we have this half note, dotted half note, quarter note, and then this whole note tied to a dotted half note. Pitch is staying the same this whole time, while this pitch is moving up and down, yeah? And here we have the same thing. A long note, a slightly faster note, and then another kind of long note. And at the same time, faster moving notes, very fast moving notes. So this texture has much more independence. So this texture is polyphonic, so almost never you're going to find that has the same texture throughout, which is why I had you limit just the first 60 seconds um, of the pieces on the golden record. 
So here's this page, and you can hear the independence of the lines, how it starts to sound more uh, thick. It starts to sound more rich and to have variety in it, less zoom, zoom, everything moving together. You're going to hear the independence. And now we have even more complicated texture. We have that move together uh, on the inside. This line here, two alto parts that move together. And you will see that the soprano and the tenor down here also move at the same pace. Look, dotted half note, and then two eighth notes, and then a quarter note, and then a half note, and then a quarter. See how they're the same? This line here and this line here. And in between, there's this pair of lines. Yeah, so we have harmonic pair, and this harmonic pair, and they overall what kind of texture? Are they the same overall? Are all four of those parts rhythmically dependent? No, only the two pairs of lines are dependent. So the answer is that this is polyphonic. This line totally in this pair of lines and that is polyphony. It sounds So that is homophony shifting into polyphony, and uh, this is quite a complex piece of music considering that it only consists of uh, singers. So this is from the late 1800s by a composer named Sergei Rachmaninoff. Rachmaninoff is the English pronunciation. Um, but it actually is very similar to this piece of music by Hans Leo Hassler from the 17th century. <laughs> So, you probably this is, right? You can see that physically it looks a lot like the Rachmaninoff did because it's got four voice parts. Four voice parts, and this time they're all on their own separate steps soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So, tenor start first, Dixit Maria, followed by the altos, Dixit Maria, and they sing, gosh, that looks a lot similar. Right, so what's the name for that? Imitation, that's right. This is independent lines. See how different these are? Dotted half, quarters, a half tied across the bar. You don't have to know what they are or their value or the name of them. All you have to be able to see is that they're different from each other, yeah? So while this is going on, well, this is going on, that's going on, because of course, imitation is a graph that's represented on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. While this is going on, playing plane, we have this fancy going on at the same time. Here it is again. So it sounds quite complex and very um, thickly textured. Even though it's just four voices singing, it sounds very complicated and fancy. And one thing that's because all sing their words at different times, sometimes you can't tell what words are, right? Bass? Sorry, spread out. Now, Hans Leo Hassler is quite a late Renaissance composer who kind of bridges the gap between the Renaissance and the 
um, Baroque era, which is right around the time information was happening when the church setting rules about how clear the text of the uh, music in the church had to be. So while music in the church could be very fancy and was supposed to be very special because it's a celebration of religion and it's meant to be more fancy in everyday life, people when, when they walk into church they want to feel the presence of a higher power. And music is a really active way to celebrate and express that. Um, so you want music to be fancy and to, and to show off the greatest things that humanity are capable of with the intention of expressing the idea that the greatest things of love come from the deity that you're there to worship. And at the same time, people at this particular period in history, the Couch Bridge, which is the Renaissance and the Baroque era, wanted to be able to understand the words. Now they're in Latin, but these are very common that are set. Um, uh, so you can see that sometimes, even when the rhythms are slightly independent, there's a great great job of sometimes lining up and creating little patches of homophony inside his polyphony. And that is this, as dictated by the Roman Catholic Church, that you have to be able to understand the text. And the most clear way to understand text is to have all of the singers sing it at the same time. And that is homophony. However, polyphony was the rule of the day. What he did was he used polyphony and inserted in little patches of homophony. There's, um, what's going to come up is another quite large patch of homophony. Check this out. Yeah, just like all of a sudden, Dixit Mari, all of a sudden they're all singing the same thing. So that patch of homophony creates even inside quite a thick polyphonic texture. Messy, messy. complicated, hard to understand. Another thing that is made necessary by thick polyphony is repetition of text over and over again. That's another way to make sure you all heard that word, right? I'm saying it 400 times. You all heard me, right? Check it out. is very close to entirely homophonic. Everybody moves it. All of a sudden that comes out of nowhere, this boof, boof, everybody singing something at the same time. That's another example. And the context religiously of the significance of the Roman Catholic Church said, you know what? We need to be able to understand text and one of the ways to do that, another way to do it is repetition. So that's the way that Hostler did it. So hopefully this visual that shows you the the vertical axis of pitch and the horizontal axis of time has shown you how line, what I mean independent rhythms that means that they're not singing the same rhythm at the same time. Yeah? So, so to go back to here you can see that do mi ni all happens at the same time. Ha mo nick. Yeah? As opposed to everybody singing something different. Polyphonic. Yeah? So if you're not just going to look at the score, and a lot of music is not written down, as we know, there are three genres of music, classical, popular, and traditional. So far we have looked at classic. There's the stuff that I just made up, which is traditional because it's just me making stuff up. And the first two is Bogoro de Sizyevo, which is a piece of sacred music, classical music composed in Russia for the uh, Orthodox Church. And this from the late 19th century, and this is from the late 17th century. I'm wrong, 16th century. 16th century. Um, and it is more polyphonic even than than this mostly homophonic thing from the 19th century, because clarity of text is wrong. so both classical, and you can see the way they're written down, what the texture is. If music is not written down, for example, traditional music, uh, it is sometimes possible to be able to see the performance. And this happens to be Lonesome Valley is a song that I've used as an example in the last lecture as being heterophonic. And because it's, you know, from a movie, opportunity, 
Sorry this is not a great quality video, but I don't actually have the movie, so we'll watch this low res version. But you can see the separate human beings who are performing, and you can see that they are not all singing the same thing. Now because it's from a movie, it gets interrupted by George Clooney, you know, being funny, but at least you can see the singers, and it's another way that I can reinforce visually um, so that you can hear and, and have your, your ears are processing the independence of the lines. Hedonic means that they're all singing the same melody, but in slightly embellished Got you into this. What do we do? Uh so even if you can't see the notation, sometimes seeing the people singing, you can just uh, singing independent lines. But each one has their own in. Uh, another time when music is not in the case of popular music and live music are really great ways to see how you can measure how many lines are being performed and what the content of those lines are. Now because here the roots are all playing classroom instruments, um, you can see who's playing what. So this is a pitched instrument, but you can see it has different size keys and so they're going to be pitched unpitched, 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 un, uh, uh, unpitched tambourine. Uh, this is um, uh, mel melodica. It's a keyboard that you blow into, so it's pitched. Uh, ukulele is pitched, unpitched, unpitched. So most of these people have unpitched instruments. The pitch stuff is going to be their singing, uh, the melodica, and the ukulele. So we'll be able to tell when it's monophonic or when it's melody and accompaniment, and when the accompaniment is pitched, what exactly that texture is. So here we go. Right, so who's actually playing it? Nobody! Except for, sorry, kazoo right here, I forgot to mention. So the kazoo is a pitched instrument, because it's basically a sung instrument, but you sing into a little thing that makes it, you know, a buzzy sound. Back again, and you're gonna hear the metronome start, and that counts as unpitched. And then everybody's going to sing the melody all together, except for Mr. Kazoo over here, who's going to sing uh, into the kazoo the bum, 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 which is the accompaniment. Here we go again. So looking and watching who's singing what and who's playing what. <laughs> Do not count unpitched percussion as texture. So we've got the melody, right? All about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. That's clearly the most salient melody. The only line is the kazoo, boom, 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 boom. All of that other stuff, the, um, uh, all the unpitched percussion does not count in terms of texture. We're talking about pitched lines. So we can see in here that the only pitched lines are the melody that everybody's singing in you. Same melody, even trainer, it's all the roots and Jimmy Fallon are singing the melody. That is the melody, and it would be monophonic except for we have this kazoo. We have this accompaniment, boom, 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 boom. And because it's just him, what is the texture of the accompaniment? 
it's just one line. The accompaniment is monophonic because we are only counting pitched lines. We have the melody sung by everyone and the accompaniment. That's the overall texture. But when you break it down, he has an accompaniment that is monophonic. And of course, that's going to change. So we've switched. So we have melodica and ukulele and this little miniature xylophone thing. Um, and they're all playing pitched lines. Uh, are they playing their pitched lines in the same rhythm or not? So if we want to discern the texture of this accompaniment, we need to see whether they're playing at the same time. We'll see if we can check out the rhythms. <laughs> And one of the fun things about this song, and one of the reasons is because she switches texture that way, where all of the accompaniment will stop, that every inch of you is perfect from the bottom to the top. reason that line stands out in people's memories, and I think that's a choice they make, is they want that line to stand out uh, in the song. They want to be like, this is a line that we want people to remember in this song. So what do they do? They make it stand out through the texture. Texture is used as an expressive tool that way. And then they go into the more big fancy stuff again, where it is a, what do we decide? Word. Everybody's in a separate rhythm, right? You can physically different rhythm going on on the different instruments. It's harder to see the rhythm in this, in the melodica, but see that they're all moving at different times. So what texture does that make? Them? That's right, polyphonic is a melody and accompaniment texture with a poly. See it happening. Slightly thicker texture this time. A little bit of accompaniment. For that. Only instrument being played right now. Melody and accompaniment. Monophonic accompaniment. Monophonic accompaniment. It is very clear when you can see the music or you can see the performers um, playing, actually performing, you can tell what the texture is. It's much easier than when you just um, listen. That said, this is a music class and listening is part of what we're here to learn. So let's give a try to this, uh, our playlist or assignment for today um, and see if we can figure it out. Is there one, 
one line you can pick out as the melody. In my opinion, the strings and the trumpet sort of share the important melody. And all the other instruments may not be as important, but they definitely all have independent lines and independent rhythms. So I'm going to call this straight up phonic. If there's melody and accompaniment, the melody switches instruments so many times that the, the complexity of the texture is, it may as well be polyphonic. Um, let's try another one. Do, 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 do. What's the one I wanted to do? Here we go. We listened to this in class when we were listening for um, mode because it's neither major nor minor because it's not western and those are only labels we use for western music. So there's unpitched percussion, not that in the texture. We're only listening for pitched melodic lines. There are multiple men singing but they are all singing the same thing. Unpitched percussion means we don't count that line. Just the one line of melody that all the men are singing. So what's this texture? That's right, monophonic, monophonic, very good. Uh, one more. Now we seem to have some high pitches and some low pitches, but are they part of one single melody or is it a low melody and a high melody happening at the same time? For the most part, it's just one pitch at a time. So it's not that complicated. And if you say, oh, I think it's this and this is why I think it's that, there is a little bit of room for objective correctness within the realm of flexibility. So I hope that helps um, support the stuff you've been reading and reinforce and explain uh, what some of these terms mean. So we post the quiz and let you get another run at it. And hopefully that'll help guide you through the listening for assignment three, identifying the texture of this music on the golden record. Okay.